All right, welcome to restorative practice. We're going to work with the kind of engagement of the uh, respiratory ex exploration in the beginning. So look at all these props we got. We've got a wall space, we've got a bolster horizontal across the mat, and a couple blocks in front, and they're at their longest setting, right? This is the, the most, or you can have a block that's just horizontal across instead of the bulkiness of two. If you start to feel like this is too much um, stuff, you know, uh, underneath your, your tush, you can always kind of roll to the side and go back to one. But explore if you are up for it. And it's completely fine if you go with one block. I want you to have a substantial amount of space here underneath you to help you elongate this back world, right? So when you sit on your blocks, this is nice. Now I got more, something more support for my rear. Now, I like to sometimes sit onto this, especially when there's two blocks, reach back for my bolster and try to lift up with my heart. So feeling that space behind the heart is the spine. So I'm trying to work with that little nudge of lift. Now my hip flexors get a little, little pressure here. I'm not too excited about that, but I'm working with this exploration. So now I'm going to lean back. So I'm going to shift the back of my pelvis to the very edge of the blocks. And then as I lower down, I'll set my feet onto the wall. If I'm too close, I'm going to make it so that it's kind of exact. And there might feel like there's more uh, pressure than you, you want in the very beginning. If you're using the wall, the wall is entirely optional. It might be too much to add on. Something else, if you do like this kind of work um, to begin, you could start with your knees bending. I have to kind of take time to get that SI area kind of feeling like it's exploring um, range of motion. So it doesn't mean it has to be flat. I want you to feel like things have to flatten here. Although here we go with sand, huh? So I've got a couple blankets under my head. So far, this feels perfect. You can have two or one. Depends on how they're folded. Then cross the sandbag at the rib intersection and kind of feel, it's not a round feeling in the ribs, right? It's, it's a feel of the touchdown of the sand and sometimes it feels better to place it where the corresponding uh, backspace feels cozy from the sand. So this might be higher for you, it might be quite a bit lower. It might not work to have it horizontal. You might decide, oh, you know, it's just today. I'm going to try the lengthwise. And oh, now I can feel my diaphragm, that movement. So you get to decide. Stretch out the arms. Make sure that blanket stack is close in to the very base of the skull. Right? I want you to place it so the sand, the, sand, the blanket, is far enough down that if you were to reach your index fingers around to the back of your neck, you can notice where C7 is, that part of cervical vertebrae, right before the vertebrae that supports the trunk, but where that pokes out. That's a tricky one to feel like what's just above that is supported by the blanket. So if it feels like your chin is like dropping more into your chest, you can take the top blanket back and feel that openness in the throat. That indeed feels better for me. So if I study it scientifically, I go, well, maybe that one's better. Blanket is not under your shoulders at all. You could curl it if you're using one at that neck kind of gap. Stretch your arms again if you're if you're meandering in the neck here. And if the feet aren't pushing into the wall quite as deeply, that's okay. Things change, right? The fascia changes, the circulation and the imprint in the muscles shifts with time. So as you close the eyes, you know, go inwards and bring some attention to that inner environment. With breath. So there's something to do. So engaging in 
circulation via the nostrils, breathing in. Exhaling, letting go. Now feeling that the upper part, right, the brain, even the parts of the upper neck area can be still. And we're doing a little bit of a, a back bend, right? A chest opener. So we're not going to let the head turn side to side too much, right? We don't want to kind of shock that part of the vertebrae, but help it ease. But the parts that move are the ribs, with or without sand. You can feel that circulation and the destination is in the center body. Now, if the sand kind of, kind of impedes your breath length, like you give up because there's weight, utilize that sand to help you progress, right? It's a progression with strengthening the diaphragm. And if you don't do sandbag breathing often, this is a good time to do it, just to practice right now. The exhale probably lengthens really easy because there's weight on you, emptying the lungs, but it's going to get interesting today. Okay, so we start with this openness, and there might feel as if that lower body from the hips down is kind of in a in kind of a, a, a position that it's told to do and doesn't necessarily feel the best. So I want you to take a moment where you slide the feet away from the wall towards the hips and feel how the movement of the knees points up. And then as the knees move out, now kind of know if you're, if you're instructed to do a pose like cobblers, it's interesting to observe how people um, are not observing you exactly right but observing myself, how I go, okay, feet together. But there are, there is a kind of an alignment, assignment you're getting to, but the lower abdominals has a nice stretch here. So the knees move out, the feet position to each other. And hopefully those blocks are helpful for this pose. If you have the two blocks besides each other, if it, at any rate, a block is helpful. So when my feet are together, Instead of trying to push further with feet energetically, just let them touch however far down the feet are. Maybe you slide them farther towards the wall. Maybe you have them close in towards the groins. That seems to be what we're taught to do. And it makes sense, but it does require quite a bit of this kind of expression of the ribs, right? lower ribs, abdominals, moving and lengthening, so elongate the front body even further here. Give it a few more moments. So we're just doing a little bit of addition to the first pose. But I sometimes like the instruction where instead of the feet being just pushed straight in, like alignment, perfect, I'll take one foot and slide it a little bit up so that the, for instance, the left all the foot is pushing into my closer towards my right heel and shift so I can work on the adductor muscles. Sometimes I like that type of instruction. So the feet are not perfectly pressing, they're kind of exploring each other. I know they're besides each other most of the day, so there's no reason why they can't be kind of, kind of intimate, right? The feet connection. You might make a discovery, a foot discovery here. All right, your unique uh, imprint on your feet. Because when they're just together, there's that massive kind of arch for some of us that can't touch anything. All right, now we're going to change the pressure in the abdominals, right? And this inner body has a pressure system, right? When we're doing these, these sessions, there's quite a drama going on. So let's take it easy with the sand. We're gonna slide it off. 
okay? And bring the knees as they point up and feel the feet, maybe turn the toes in, the feet in and out, take a few moments of that. And then when you're pressing into the heels, feel that juncture right at the hip, the, you know, the top of the thigh, the connecting plate, right, from the femur into the pelvis. Just feel the hinge there, how the, the props position is creating that kind of gap. Relax the tailbone, kind of naturally notice your inhale creates the arch, it lengthens the spine. And now we're gonna create a little more of that. So leave the block or blocks down there, don't worry about them. Okay, so now I'm gonna go down to one blanket. So if you have two, slide one back. And I'll walk the feet as close as my feet will go in towards the, the seat without harming my knees. So you gotta be cautious. And now you're gonna get in towards an inversion. So preparation is to lift up the buttocks just a little bit. And then I'm gonna push the bolster. First thing, I just push it down a couple inches and then a couple more so I know, okay. I got the back of my pelvis and it's connected on top of that bolster. So if I relax the hips down, that hinge is a little less. So I want you to make sure the bolster is not too far down, but when you bring the legs upside down, right, you're feeling how that reverse action flushes through the legs. You could make the blanket lower if you prefer. It needs to feel like you can set your brain onto it and there's not, there's not a requirement to nod your head side to side and it's comfortable. So whatever you need to find, remember some of those images of the, the blanket kind of wadded around the brain as a kind of a, a shell around it. You can do that too. You can play with it. Okay, so take that lift and then feel when the legs are in that lift, if you can move them back, even if you bend the knees. Okay, of course, bending is fine. Sometimes it's required. But feeling when the legs kind of move back towards your face, what part of the back of the leg is stretching. All right, so I want you to let the legs separate. So there's some separation going on. And the back of the pelvis centers, you decide how far the bolster is underneath you. I like it so if I feel around to the bolster, my rear is right on that edge. It's not on the floor. It's too far that way. But it should feel comfortable for your back. It's a nice back strengthening shape. Bend the knees, take a ball, or if you don't have a ball, I suppose you have to get one of those blocks, okay? Place it between the knees. It's gonna push them a little bit outwards. Um, but when you have the ball now, I want you to actually push into it so place it in a position of between that you can squeeze, okay? Arms, if possible, go back overhead, straight back. If you got a blanket back there, even better. And alternate squeezing and releasing, but you're still clutching onto the ball with the legs. Figure out how the breath will work with this, okay? So exhale seems to be the squeezing. Okay, now give it about two more squeezes, pushing in, breathing, not sure where we're going with it quite yet, right? Just keeping that action of the adductors, inner leg, groin sensation, and then stretch the arms straight open and let the knees shift to the right. Now feel as they go right that the weight kind of accumulates over into that hip. Don't let the, the chest roll to the right. Try to keep your chest open. The inhale center, you don't have to purposely squeeze the ball and exhale, knees to the left. Keep breathing. We're gonna give it an extra hold because we did a longer hold last side. Breathing. You can think longer breaths here or not think but feel and that will help you start to work with that idea of retention, right? You don't have to feel fear about holding your breath. The knees draw in center, legs stretch up. Although I don't think of this as a stretch of my legs, but they lift. And then that challenges the abdominal muscles, but more so the organs, right? Because it puts pressure. 
diaphragm has a different kind of movement pattern. It will still move the same way, but the actual attention to the abdominal uh, zone, right, becomes a, a place of toning when we have the legs upside down. This is the first abdominal strengtheners, is legs up. Okay, now try with the knees bending here and then feel if you can start to lower the feet. Now I want you just to, look, to work on lowering them, not touching the ground. So I'm gonna keep a pressure into the ball, a little bit of pressure, find the right amount. I want the knees bending, right? So we don't want legs straight like that. So that's not gonna be good for our low back. Keep the knees bending. You can bend them as much as you like. And then as I lower down the feet, I'm not gonna to touch the ground on this one. I want you to feel like it's a comfortable hold of the ball, no extra squeezing. You're not gonna get extra, extra credit in your, in your muscles for that. So kind of tracking the abdominal, lower abdominals here. Okay, and then when you bring the knees back so they're just straight up to that vertical spot, not into the chest yet, breathe, belly full, belly breath. Exhale, squeeze. Okay, and then reach with either hand to take the ball out and grab onto your belt. Okay, so get a belt. The feet can come to the floor, the knees can squeeze to the chest. You can also stay with this kind of strengthening position for the abdominals. It kind of wind, it, you get a little winded with it if you just hold it for eternity. But feel now when the legs are drawing in towards each other, how that has a mild movement in the back of the pelvis. Clearly, it stretches it outwards. So let's move the belt. We're going to do brain float. So I want your belt to be buckled, connected. You certainly don't want the buckle on your foot, but I put it closer to my side. So when I scoop up the right foot, we're gonna take right foot up into the belt. And as the left leg extends down, get a sandbag and carefully, no rush. We don't get to everything, that's okay, but let's not rush the poses. Place the sand on the top of the left thigh. And if you're pretty excited about a wall, you, you could scoot yourself closer to it if you like that reference for keeping the leg um, in that nice alignment. Okay. Now, I'm gonna make the belt so the loop is just the right amount. I'm gonna tighten it, cinch it up a bit. And then as I feel my leg with that lift, I'm gonna actually pull with my hands wide on the belt. And I'm going to move the belt as far back to my head before I lift my head. And then lift my head and place it to that center of the back of your head where the shelf is. Okay. So you might like the shelf leg option. I tend to find the shelf and the occiput and then I'll go a little bit higher. Otherwise, I don't like care for this pose. So for me, I've got to modify it. So my neck is happy. Some don't like the neck support. They like to have their head on the ground. So some will go a little farther back. Their flexibility lets them do that. I think that's part of it. And they can actually have your, their head kind of touching the blanket and still get a little traction. So find what works for you. If that lift feels like you're gripping in your jaw, and maybe loosen the belt or tighten it. You kind of find that way. Open out the arms on the ground and let the weight of the sand actually activate this right hamstring. It's not just the quad, it's the right side. If you take the sand off, you'll notice there's not as much sensation. Well, clearly, I know the weight is obvious, but in the right leg, the sensation is a little bit of a boost. Yeah, the belt might feel initially, oh, it's okay in my foot, but then you might find, oh, I want a little farther into the arch. Okay, I want you to find what works for you with the foot. Whatever instruction you've been told, you know, find what works for you. Elongate through the right leg. 
Relax the throat. Anything that's too much in your back, you just bend the left knee. You could even have the sandbag still on that leg. You could slide it farther back onto the torso or kind of diagonal, tilt the sandbag on the left thigh with the knee bent the whole time. Sometimes that just feels better. So the pose progresses. So I'm eventually going to find myself in a position where I can maybe nod my head a little bit. Feel where there's an accurate awareness, right, from hamstring through that right side of the spine, up into the neck, circulation to the brain. Sometimes the sand doesn't even feel right, but it might feel good for a minute, and then you decide it. This feels good without it. Now feel how the leg part, that right side is different than the left in this moment, but see if you can manage that shift of moving the sand off the left thigh and taking the left leg up. Now I tend to hold the back of my head where the belt is when I shift and put the left foot up in transition. But you might, this when I was first taught this, it was both feet in the belt. That was what we did, was this, not one leg at a time. But then I decided, well, it doesn't seem like it works for everybody's flexibility to do that. So you've got to find what works and is adaptive to people. So when I lower the right leg down, unless you're going to stay with both up for a while, it's an interesting load on the neck, right? Keep in mind, this is a little bit in the neck of, of traction. So if it's too much, you know, you can always give yourself some slack and feel, oh, that's great. You know, I like that change right now. That felt good to make a little more, little more length of my belt and let the head lower down. Okay, sand or no sand on the right thigh, you choose. Maybe having more traction on the belt uh, will make the sand feel better. Don't remember not doing too much. You want to supply the body with the props to support the therapeutic shape. This is important to receive the pose. You can receive the breath, your breath. Instead of, you know, kind of noticing and thinking, oh, it looks funny, emphasize, it all looks funny. Um, if it looks funny, it's good. Um, emphasize the end range of everything, like the foot and the belt, the belt at the back of your head. Maybe for you, it's better right at the occiput, right at the shelf, so the lower part. Like some of us hold tension in different parts of the upper back and even into the shoulders or all of it. Right? It might be all of the above. But create that range of the breath, even when you're in kind of a complicated shape. Breathe. It only helps. Okay, now with that move of the neck, you may not even think of this as a lot of neck range, but what we're going to do is give the neck a, a relaxation here. So as you bring the, the leg lifting, like feel that like there's resistance with the left, the left foot pushing. Okay, that kind of bounces up the pose a bit. So slide any sand away. Hands hold the sides of 
of the, the belt. So you're going to hold the belt on the sides of your head. And then bend the left knee and lean back your head into the belt. Slide the belt off the back of your head. I sometimes like to kind of uh, bring my hands right to the sides of my, my skull and then hold the belt and actively kind of traction my neck. Just slight. It's really subtle. It's just a cranial support. It's not like I'm trying to push my neck to hurt anything. Just that feeling of the belt. All right. Now when I lower my head down, it's already down anyway. I'm going to take the right hand. So right hand holds the belt and left leg is up. Cross the left leg directly to the right side. And it's not down diagonal, it's to the side. And that left side of the leg is has some activation. It's probably a little shy to get too much going on because it's just been kind of hamstrung, right? You've had the back of it focused. So now all of a sudden you're reaching into the side. Now I want you to let the left hand, if you're comfortable with it, you don't have to touch your hip, but you can put the left hand to that upper outer thigh right above the the thigh bone, right, connecting to the pelvis, kind of greater trochanter area. Just let your hand touch there. It usually is kind of a perfect touch. And it fits well. And you're guiding that left hip a little bit downward so that you can feel the stretch, the awareness, that's a better word for it, to the side of the leg that you're trying to work on the side tissue. You can bend and straighten the left leg while you're doing that. It's, it's a little intense, huh? So bending. If it's clicking, just be aware. You don't want to overclick this stuff. So you're going to bend and feel going slow and pushing over to that left foot into the belt. Breathe. That would be pretty functional. Okay, you can let the left arm relax out. Sometimes holding onto the leg doesn't do anything more. It's basically tracking it. I want you to feel like you can track that side of the leg. Okay. Create traction or I guess resistance with the right hand holding the belt. And then give yourself a little more slack so that your left leg can resist and go up. You got to give yourself some room with that belt to bring the leg back up towards standing upside down. Okay, bring the right foot up into the belt, push the feet out wide, hold on to the belt while you do this, and have that wider stance. It's not as wide as you can go, but it's a little bit out. Circulation-wise, in the legs, breathe. Belly moves with the breath. Okay, now when you're pulling, and you're upside down, you're upside down-ish, and if this is truly upside down, right? You're able to coordinate your body upside down when you're using props, right? You wouldn't be able to stay in a handstand very long anyway, right? So this is time and inversions. So when you slide the feet together, pull the belt to your ribs, and then lower the left foot down and hold onto the belt with the left hand, and cross the right leg wherever it goes straight across. It's not going downstream. And your right hand could touch onto that external right upper outer, right? It's outer hip area. So what I tend to do is I'll touch onto that side and then it will move the right leg downwards. <laughs> so I'm trying on this one today is to go straight across. The left foot could flop from the bottom, could turn out. That would be probably a good idea not to force it to be up. And then give a moment here where you're bending and straightening. And I imagine one hip, if we were to, you know, videotape how your hip angle is on both sides, one side, you favor sides, and you might have obviously less uh, mobility on one bit for the other, and it might not be your hip, it might be some part of the back that's gripped up on that side. So who knows what it can be, but you're exploring range of motion and circulation here. Give it a few more moments. You're bending. And my head is just centered back. I'm not trying to turn my head a lot. 
It's a good exercise just to keep the spine long this way, especially when your bolster's under your pelvis. Okay, now the next time you bend through that right leg, just get a feel of bending, kind of that hook, the connection of strength from the knee to the hip. So you can tell just this bending pattern is good, right? As long as it, the knee doesn't hurt. Strengthening and connecting. Now come back in center. Now this side is what we're gonna work on, coming up in side sage. So let's get ready for that. So as we come back in, let's just slip the belt off the right foot. And as you put the belt to the side, just keep going. You're gonna go knees to the left. You're gonna to have to kind of roll. I would get very cannonball-like here. And then slide over to the left on left hip, sorry, to the right, really. And then push your bolster up, take the blocks away. And you don't have to go put the blocks away, but place them. So there's going to be one somewhere else, wherever that one that's going to be, somewhere else. That's a good instruction. And then have your, your blanket. So we're prepping for the side that we were just reaching with. Okay continuation of care for the side. So we've got sand over by the left knee. My bolster is across still. And I need a ball. And not all of you are gonna use the ball for this, I imagine, but the block behind you, place it so it's high up. You can always knock it over. Okay, and likely the arm isn't going to go this way to the left. It's going to go back or a little to the right behind you. All right, so as you lean down, your left thigh is bending. We, we know side stage, so we have the ball, the inside of the right leg. And as you lean into it, you're going to add some weight onto the side. And it could be across the hip. Well, that makes sense from what we were just doing when we are angling over. And you might go, oh, no, I'm ready for something different. I want to have the sand a little bit higher in the curve of the waist. And that can be nice too. In fact, that's interesting because that curve of the waist, during the day, it's impacted down, right? So this is elongating that side. So fuss around a bit with your, if you're using the ball, sometimes the ball can kind of, detract from the purpose of the pose, huh? You get so focused on it. So if it helps your knee, use it. Find a way that it's supporting your knee. Doesn't make the knee any sensation, but spikes. You know, you don't want to even know there's spikes on the ball, maybe. Now the right arm can go over. It can actually circle. You know, give yourself some moments where you're awakening into a new a new part of the set right there. We're now in the side, kind of side field of the body. Okay, now the right arm could touch the block. I like a touch kind of down feeling with the arm, whether it's overhead on something, or if it's on the side of me or on the bolster. Any of those is good. If it's kind of flailing around, then you have a little struggle with centering the breath. Maybe you don't, but I do. Okay, so find where your neck is very, uh, it's useful, right? So find the position of the neck to be useful for this side focus. And if your sand is starting to fall, you can just feel the beginnings of it. All right, now coming into the pose. If you're not there already, that's fine. You can spend time meandering with the props. And the challenging aspect might be relaxing your head and your neck. Breathing slow. Feel the ribs move. Now try this one for a few moments with 
out the sand. See if you can let the sand kind of slip off and then feeling how the movement of the ribs are without sand. Is it any different? Maybe you adapt to the sand pretty well. It does give you a little bit of push with the stretch. You know, in between these two sides, let's do a little bit of movement for arching and flexing the spine. So when we move the sand off for, for certain, if you didn't already, it's going away. And then you'll feel that when you roll, right, there's a tendency to use those extremities, especially the upper ones, a lot to get over. So feel, especially if you've got that, that, that bolster, but you can use your sensation of touching onto it with your ribs and then see if you can get that rib rolling motion. Right, the rib rotunda here, movement. And then when you turn, hey, in fact, we can do this. Okay. So if the ball's there, I just kind of encourage you to move it for a moment and bring the hands to the ground so they're not on anything mushy. You don't want anything mushy under the wrist here. So feel a little bit of that twist through the waist and then bring the right leg to the left leg so they're stacked. And then you'll push and turn to your hands and knees. So into a tabletop position and flex the spine. Feel the spine lifting and then inhale, arching. So alternating, arching and flexing the spine. You give yourself a little wiggle room. So if you need to kind of move your tail a little bit back and forth, and that feels interesting for your awareness inside. If you want to go back into a downward facing dog, that's fine too. You feel as if that energy, right, of pressing, if that's kind of something you, you sense would be helpful for alignment, you could push back and lift the hips up and the heels towards the ground. Right, since you've been out of the inversion for a little bit of time, this is clearly inverting the body. Okay, now bending through the knees if you're not there already. We're going to take side stage to the right side down. Okay, so turn to that right hip. Remember, this is restorative, right? So we're, we're restoring. So part of that is finding props that support you to settle. So I'm using the props to really elongate the tissues. So I've got the right leg close to the bolster. It may not touch it. For some of us, it might not be all the way kind of smashed into it. Some there's going to be this hip, kind of the arching pattern in, in the center body. So I would kind of let that be. Just let your arch be if it's a little bit of space between the right hip and the bolster fine. Okay, but natural attention to placing the sand where it settles. This side for my ribs, it's probably my contour of my ribs is different. A um, little bit different if I feel like I've got to look to a screen, <laughs> it does change. So noticing how the weight of your side you got to let it go. You can't really try to clench and hold it up. Because what's the purpose in that with this? You're putting sand on you. So the idea is it's getting you to be grounded. Left arm can reach overhead. It could touch to the block. You could move the block to the left if it's behind you. So it's feeling as if it helps that circulation in the side. It's all up to you. Lengthen with the weight of your head. Relax into the blankets. Just feeling the movement of the breath in the ribs. And just maybe you'll feel that it's so ribful that in this moment, it's hard to feel that movement of the ribs and towards the spine, the connectors, although it's all connected, right? But 
You can kind of feel the impact around the lungs and that force in the body of expansion and emptying the lungs, let it go. And you can probably relax the, your head more, right? The brain, you can always let that go more. I know it's held up most of the day, so it doesn't really know how to let go. So, you know, that's normal. But try to let, and you might even have to purposely let your head push a little bit into the blanket. Just let it go. Let it go, let the neck lengthen. I've seen um, uh, some instruction where they'll put like an eye pillow on the neck in this pose. So they'll just let the eye pillow be right on the side of the neck. It just conforms to it, right? It's kind of a good idea because you're probably not going to tighten up and lift up more if there's a little pillow there on your neck. Okay, now as we kind of add on the um, coordination of our, our ribs and our back. Now this is kind of, you know, very restorative pattern here. So we're going to bring a little bit of energy into it. And when we come out, I would just move your, well, yeah, you can leave your block back there. It would probably be fine for where we're going. Yeah, it'll be fine. So you'll let the chest stay open, right? If I'm reaching with the arm, that's clearly a little bit of length. If I let the elbow bend, even more. But move the sand, but keep it there. It's gonna be actually where that thigh is down. That thigh is gonna use it in a moment. So it's nice to know when this all comes together well. So you're gonna come up and you're going to sit on the bolster yeah, sometimes these this choreography comes together. I'm going, oh wow, it does leak. Okay, so muscle memory is, is good. <laughs> so I'm going to use the block behind me, maybe. It might be useful. Some of you really with longer limbs, it might be great because you'll have a little greater reach. So you bag your right leg. It was already bending when you're leaning into the towards that right side. So keep it in that mobility. But let a sandbag, so I'm just gonna sit cross-legged. In fact, I'm gonna take a full spinal twist. So I'll face to the wall, but I'm gonna put my sand on the upper right thigh, bending thigh, and the left leg will cross over, the right leg. So it's pretty bendy. Now, if you decide, yeah, that's not working for my, my joints right now, today, I put a block in front of my right shin, and I can put my foot on that block. The knee could be out like this, and I'll have a broader stretch in my ribs. You could have it closer in the machine, actually, like that. That can help you with the twist, too. I think the knee up is okay as well. I'm just concerned about how that kind of grips into the organs, but I'm sure you can accommodate, um, make accommodations with your, with your breath. So either foot is on something, or the foot is on the floor besides your right leg. So place that movement here of tension where the ribs, they kind of center in again. Now they can move inwards and upwards to strengthen into the back. So some methods of doing that are things like, right, you would hold a block in front and reach. This is one method to do it. I feel confident that I can hold onto my knee and, and find that too. Okay, so just a moment of that. If you want to hold the block, we'll send you extra credit points or something. Okay, so turn left and bring the left hand back to the block, or if that's too far back, you can use your blankets with the left hand on them and bring the right elbow to the side of that left leg. It may not be perfectly on the side of the leg 
it might be just above the knee, right? It's farther up than the patella, right? It's really onto the, the bony part of the left leg. It's kind of all bony, but when you push, you're going to turn, but you got to kind of hook that elbow to that left leg. And then guess what, right? You have rotation, right? When you pin that arm and you spin around, you're only spinning so far huh? So feel, if you want to bring the left hand around the waist and kind of grab onto the, if you've got a sandbag that has a handle, that can be nice to do. I like that sometimes. So feel when the turn is in the torso and that span through the ribs, move the ribs. If there's something that's kind of pulling you where the right thigh isn't settled, center down to that right leg a little bit, kind of tilt, feel that you're grounded. There's always further to go on these types of poses. So if you feel like I've got to get a little further, just be where you're at. Let the ribs move with your breath. You can always get more mobile in your breathing muscles here. Wouldn't it be nice if that's how you created the twist? And then when you come back in center, see if you can keep the left arm. Now, if it's back here, you're going to bring it behind your back so the top of the hand, right, is at the back. And then you're going to shift back forward, lift up the chest, inhale. You can tilt your ear to your shoulder. This is often taught where you put your hand on the side of your head. I'm not a big fan of, of plugging that one. Um, but tilting my head naturally is fine. Come back and center. Okay. And let's switch the side so we stay focused on this one. So there's a complete focus here. So when I come out, I'm going to bring both legs forward because the knees could take the, uh, a moment without the bending. So I'm going to bend. Uh, I'm going to bend. I'm going to reach through my leg, flex through the feet. You can take your belt. This is a good one. We've all been in this one zillions of times. Okay, if it's in a loop, no big deal. You can swing it over the feet. If it's doubled that way, a little bit of extra support. And I'm gonna pull on the balls of the feet, lifting up. I'm gonna try to stay lifted versus falling forward. Okay, right, try to reinforce that engagement in the back. Breathe. We will do some forward bend soon, so we'll get there. But let's keep the spine tone here. Let's keep the tone around the middle. Okay. Now when you come out, you might do a little bit of a leg tantrum. A little bit of tapotman is good. You can also use the palms. You can make fists and the sides. So get up towards those hips and then into the bony side of the legs. Okay. Now when we switch sides, we're going to bend the left leg and then it kind of curls in a movement right under. These are interesting. Now I've always wondered, right, if I got my bolster, like I stack a blanket on it on top of the bolster, if your knee isn't comfortable, do that. Don't, don't make yourself struggle more. It's okay, even if you're twisting, right, if you have more height under your rear. If the knee is uncomfortable, it will push up the pelvis and make that reach of the leg even more comfortable. Okay, so sand on the left side, whether you add a blanket or not, bend the right knee, and be curious about how simple you can make this occur. You could walk your foot over to the left, you could use your arm to help it go over. How broad should I make the lower leg, right? Should I poke it out to the side? No, shouldn't. You should bring it into the center so that when you bring the right leg across, it's a pretty kind of shrunk, you're trying to shrink wrap this whole thing, like in the legs, you're squeezing them so that there's the circulation in the groins and the lymphatics. So there's not lymphatic drainage, right, for the immune system, but it is putting some circulation into the lymph here in the legs. That's why we're using sand. That's why we have the knee pointed up and we're, we have that resistance the whole time. Okay, it's a lot of work. You could put your foot on a block, this is a great option. I actually prefer it sometimes. I have a broader movement in my ribs, okay? So left arm to the right leg, let's go with the turn, right? So we've got that motion. We've kind of had some awareness of the ribs when we last side we stretched our 
center line up. But feeling where you rotate, right? It's not the lumbar, the lumbars, say lumbars. It's not the, the thicker vertebrae on the bottom. That should be pretty isolated, like you got a brace on there. All right, that's a good arching area. But you're trying to turn in the middle track. So you could put a right hand on your very lower part of your back in the lumbars. There's not a lot of them. You got a lot of thoracic. So, but they're smaller as we know. So when we turn, the right hand comes back to the block or around to the belt, not to the belt, to the sandbag. No, a belt might work too. The sandbag handle. And when you're turning, if you have that range with your right hand touching something behind you or around you, that should help you create that twist. Yeah, with all this arm energy, see if you can kind of take a moment, visualize that it's the center body that's doing the turn. So breathing up, breathing in, and exhale, turn. So it's like you're breathing in and up. And exhale, turn. A few more breaths here. And the legs are probably oh so ready to get movement, a little bit longer move. So when you come back center, I would let the right arm stay behind you. And you could let your left hand hold the right knee and tilt the left ear to the shoulder. It doesn't have to be perfect form where you're right smack dab in the middle. You can just let your eyes close and feel your way to that gentle stretch of the right side of the neck. It's good. It's good to get that length. Okay, let's do a few moments of seated arrangement here. So we'll come back in center, taking the sand away. We're going to kind of rearrange, but before we all to certain change our position, taking that cross-legged and just hands on the knees and circle. So I'm going to rotate from my sitting position and just move my rib cage around so i'm circling this is different when you're sitting than when you're when, what, what we're about to do so kind of feel this opportunity okay and then let's shift over if you were shifting left a lot a lot recently i would like you to go to the right so you just change it up and then turn so that your feet are towards the wall and well, actually they're at the wall and you'll take your blocks to the sides so they're going to be far away from your knees, up on the other side of the mat. Have your bolster. Why not? Let's use it a little bit. Let's turn the bolster lengthwise. Push it away so it's not near your knees right now. It's right touching to the blankets. I'll move this away so you can see a little better. Okay. So try with the knees uh, lifting. So I want you to let the toes hook under. Lift up the knees. And then stretch the heels so they're a little bit up at the wall. Okay, so that's a downward facing dog. And with the hands stretching out, you're gonna let your head touch towards the bolster. It may not, it may be inches away, maybe a foot away, but you're going to let the armpit chest get that stretch. Armpit chest, right? This arm up into the lymph here. We did a lot of lymph in the inner leg already. So we've got to add on to the uppers here. Okay, give it a little bit more time. We're gonna get a little bit more time. We're gonna lower the, the position a bit. So you're gonna walk the feet forward away from the wall and then walk your hands back to your feet and use the wall for your seat. Okay, so if you're too close to the wall, you're gonna take a somersault, huh? So you wanna scoot your feet enough uh, in the, away from it, right? So that you can let your hips be lifting and supported. Yeah, I like this one actually with a bolster quite a bit. I found this to be nice as I tip the bolster. If you've got a bolster that's not mushy, right, this works fine. 
but I have the hands on the short end and then I can get the armpit chest to stretch and then try to let my, my head lean between the arms so my arms kind of nestle in towards my head. And that might be a far range, but feet can step a little bit apart. Make sure that you can place pressure into the heels. And then that moves back up into the seat all the way through the hamstrings. Let's at least spend a few moments with the arms kind of dangling. So lower the arms down. They can hold on to the elbows. Again, you can let them dangle as well without gripping anything. And feel the blood circulation, right? So it reverses to head below the heart, to the brain. And relaxing the neck, let your head nod a little side to side. Okay, now when we start to shift back to the bolster, which means on it, okay, we're going to move the arms forward. Now we might have different tactics to get here. So you're going to walk the hands on forward, then the feet back to the wall, and then lower the knees down. And let's take a, a reach of the torso on the bolster. So I'm going to lower down so my thighs, uh, the thighs touch the bolster pretty firm. And then I'm going to lower down and bring my elbows out wide on the blanket. My knees are bending so my feet are at the wall. They're not up the wall, although that's kind of comfy but I want the, the feet at the base. If it hurts your feet, don't do that. You can bring your feet up. You can bring the top of the foot, like the toenails to the wall. That's a good one with this one. Feels kind of nice. So you choose. Okay. I like that reinforcement of my feet pushing a little bit because it feels like it connects into my bones, right? It's resistance. That's the idea of the wall. So let your head lower to your arms. Again, you can push farther away from the wall if you feel too crammed up. But ideally, just explore the movement of the front body with the breath. Yeah, it's interesting how the armpit area has so much, of, it has an openness here and it's probably pretty comfy, but not other ways that we move the arms feels this easy. So this is an important one, this one, this crocodile pose is a good one. So this openness in the armpit area, even though it looks really pretty basic and not much going on, there's not many other poses right, that we can do this with relaxation. So the nervous system is not kind of tied up with exhaustion and wanting to get out. So give it a few more breaths. Let your head lower down. You know, if I go to sleep, you can unmute yourself and tell me to wake up. Okay, so feeling where the, the hip bones, right, what you consider the hip area, you know, it's, it's in almost a almost towards flexing in that back area when the knees are bending here. So when you come back, we want to find a way to make some friendship with lunges. <laughs> They're good for us, right? So when you come back up, move the bolster to the side. We will be using it when we get on our back in the final little set. Let's take a little field trip in the legs. So you can have a blanket under your knees if you like right now, but we are going to get the foot forward. So take a block set to the inside of the sides of the mat, and then scoot the knees in towards each other. Use the wall deliberately on this one. So I like this. When I've gone through my elbows out like this, now I have my hands on the high block. Okay, this area is just starting to get conditioned into this. So when I step the right foot forward between, it's not perfectly between the blocks, it's to the right side, but 
when I lean into it, I want you to find how the right knee shifts forward. You might have to step your foot or scoot the toes and move your foot farther forward. If the knee, if you look down, it's not over the toes. Could be over the ankle, but not over the toes. Okay. You can use a blanket under your left knee if you need to, but take a moment where that reaches to the right knee forward and the left front of that leg, oof, I can feel it starting to, well, I'm trying to negotiate the stretch so it's not so harsh that I, I'm just really upset about it. So I'm trying to just get the movement of the knee, kind of untangle that front of the left thigh, the left foot's pushing the wall. Okay, now feel if you can start to get the back knee slowly up. So I'm going to move my blocks a little bit back so I can get a better balance here. And then I lift up my back knee. That's a jolt usually. And then I'm going to reach the back heel so it's still at the wall. The ball of the foot, though, I'm stretching the bottom of the foot nicely. So if this hurts your foot, you can always find a um, variation. Right, for you, for some of you, it might be... You don't want your heel up at the wall. You don't like that. You could put the foot on the floor and turn the foot out. You could do that too. Okay. So to each his own. So bending the right knee. I hope that's for everybody. Okay. We're going to get a little bit into the side band. So I want you to turn the back foot out. So the left side of the foot is against the wall. The right knee is above the ankle. I want to shorten my stance, but I'm sure my teacher would say, don't do that. <laughs> So I'm going to try to keep it wide. My right hand is on one or two blocks. That's not a question. It's up to you. You can stack them on that right side, get more support. Turn the waist to the left, to that left side, and lift the left arm up. Use your props. you got a wall, you got blocks, or one block, whichever you choose. It's only temporary, but feel how this hip area, you're trying to move it inward. So I'm just turning so you can see. You don't have to turn, but this inside of the right leg should feel a stretch, and it's kind of rotating on the flesh. Okay, the last few poses we do will be on our back so that you can get more of that. But you want to feel this kind of twist, right? So when you're twisting your ribs, you're turning that area, and now you're getting a little bit of this flesh tone. Okay, left arm over the left side of the face. And then turn back down, lower the hands to two blocks, careful of the knee, right? You want to make sure all this tissue is supported. So lift the back heel, step the left foot to the right foot forward. Take a moment, bowing into the legs, head down, breathe. Exhale. And then step the right foot back. Okay. This time we're going to start higher and then go lower when we're about ready to get out. So we're already up. The energy is a little lifted. So take the blocks to the proper support. Turn the right foot out. We're going backwards on this side. I know I've told you, but I'm not confused about it. So left foot, it's parallel. And I'm trying to be really careful here of this knee. So I'm not, I don't want to torque the knee and turn it out. I don't want to turn it in. So if you can see your knee, you know the schools where you really got to see it. I think that's sometimes smart because you actually could, you know, pull your pant up and make sure that that knee is not twisting. And then when I have that right foot down, I'm going to start to turn my ribs to the right and then feel if I can move the waist open and right arm goes up. Your block could be fine if it's on the high setting. You could stack them, but... Don't make the blocks so confusing that you're going to fall off of them. So careful with that. But use the wall. You can shorten your stance if you need to. But see if you can look down to your left knee because it tends to move on its own in moments. If all of this is too much, you can always take a, a break too. It's only temporary here. Just a couple of these active things. So when you reach back into that right foot, take a pause, stretch the right arm over the right side of the face. Breathing. Yeah, feel the length in that side. Side stretches. And then lower the right hand down. Pivot the back heel up. So the heel is to the wall. Or if you don't like that, the heel could be towards the floor. Okay? But have a high lunge. 
this is a semi-high lunge, right? High lunge would be arms to the ceiling, but feel the left knee and feel, actually don't feel the knee, feel the muscles around the back compartment of that left thigh. It should be very, you know, a sizable amount of circulation in there that you're, you're steeping in. Steeping. Two more seconds. Okay, now keep steeping. You're going to lower the back knee to a blanket or the firm ground. If you got some carpet, that will be fine probably. But when you lean forward with the thigh and the back leg, right, it's stretching. It's not as elastic as uh, we think it should be maybe, but it's going to help us stay sturdy during the day. So there's a certain amount of restriction there. So feel there's other parts that are lengthening, right? From the lower abdominals, right? Into the organs. This is so good for the organs, right? Getting this nice sense of length into the back, to the kidneys. If you need to tip your head forward, that's okay. You don't have to have your head lifting. Okay, breathing. You know, the way we reach out of this one will be the left foot will come back. So again, if you're padding under your knees, keep it there, but bring the left knee back and take the blocks to the side, but both hands on the mat, turn the hands a little bit out on the edge of the mat and stretch both hips, stretching forwards, front of the hips, lifting the torso up. Feel that natural design to the spine. Okay, we're going to repeat this, but on our back. So instead of pushing way back with your hips, I want you just to come back almost to table, okay, but not quite. Bring the left knee forward or the right knee and then turn. You'll put a blanket back, so you'll just have one, and you're gonna turn, so it's not too quick on the back. We're just taking a motion to get to our back muscles. Put the bolster on the base of the wall, flat, horizontal. I don't know how else your bolster would be. Okay, now as you lower back, push the feet a little bit down. Take some moments to get your everything situated. And I think there's days I like a little bit of bulk for this type of sequencing under my head, this little part. So I want you to feel your feet wide. So there's a width to the feet. There's a pressure and with your feet touching the bolster that works its way into your natural spine arch. So just feel that. Feel the movement of the belly with the breath. You don't have to actually touch the belly, but feel that movement. Okay, now when you're pushing to your feet, you're going to lift your hips up. Go about 50% of your maximum. So not overdoing it here yet. Not that we have to. And then let the arms reach overhead and lift the hips up a little bit higher. And lower the spine and the arms down by your sides. Again, inhale, lift the hips up, stretch the arms back overhead. Please go at your own pace, which seems to be alternating, lifting and lowering the hips. But it's more than hips, right? It's spine as well. So when I lift up, this is that lowest basin of my back. The, the lumbars, right, which have a lot of downward pressure during the day. So this is pretty interesting for how it brings circulation there. Okay, now next time you lift up, we're going to bring the arms so they stay down by the hips. I'll just leave them there. Just leave your arms where they're at and let the hips lift up and turn the palms open towards the ceiling. You can be with or without your blanket. However bulky it is, you can lower the bulk. That's usually taut. But as long as my blanket's not under my shoulders at all, I'm okay here. I'm really focusing on my leg parts here, the pressure into my feet, how it ignites that resistance into my the femur, into the hip. Right? That's pretty potent. Bridge is a very potent pose. We started with it. We're at the final part of class. We're ending with a little bit of bridge pose. The last pose will be quite a bit of lift. 
Okay, now noticing if the breath is kind of held up high in the lungs, likely it's going to go way up to the top. It moves to that upper portion of the, the breathing muscles right around the clavicle. It tends to go there here. That's okay. So feeling that, but as you lower your spine down, empty the lungs, lengthen the spine, pressing down all the way through the base of the spine, go all the way down, make an imprint of your back on the floor, feel the natural kind of little curve of the low back. And then I want you to push your bolster to the right side of your mat and Make it easy. I'm going to use the blanket under my head here, same height, and then let the left leg swing over to the bolster on the right side and see if I can find some props here. So I'm going to use a ball. I'm going to be careful not to roll a lot to the right because then it ends up happening. So very important here that you have your chest open. So we've got the sand and the ball thing. That's going to move your chest a bit, but if you're using sand, it's, it's not required on this, but you could add it to the side of the left thigh. And we kind of come full circle with some things we, we focused on today. So left arm is open, head maybe turns to the left. Finally, we're, we're okay with letting the head turn. And settle. These last couple poses, each of them is some time. So letting the body experience and the pose kind of ripens. You know, let your head center back in and see if you can make that transition kind of body-wise um, relax. So I'm going to move the ball if you're using that and just let the knee shift back in center. Feel how you can just slowly, you don't have to make a lot of assignments into the legs. You can feel them casually shift so the back muscles are comfortable. And two feet touching down is helpful to start here. And then left leg relaxed and right leg swings over to the bolster. But feel that if you have that mobility in your lower bones to cross the leg, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is. When you observe all different levels, it, it actually is something you've, you've developed is your ability to have that flexibility even if it's just in a practice doesn't feel the same in all events of life but yeah see what happens so taking the sand and using that as a as a bit of a it's a bit of a force isn't it even if we don't want the force okay All right, now as your head turns to the right, your left hand could be anywhere. It might even be casually on your ribs. So that you can feel that breath, especially to the side of the ribs. Where it may not naturally move around to, but you've got possibilities inside with your breath. To really refine that movement inside. Let your head roll maybe to the right. Maybe the side doesn't want to roll. Relaxing the throat.
Okay, now when you come out, and you're going to keep that momentum. So now that the center body has been kind of wrung out, it's been kind of churned and twisted, and you're going to basically flush out. So when you move the ball, it goes bye-bye. The sand goes down to the side to the wall. You roll to the side. If you want to squeeze your knees into the chest, that's up to you, okay? But it's not required, right, to get that that reach on the back. It's, it's required at the end, okay? So I put the bolster right next to the wall. <laughs> and what you want to do is have your blanket so that you have enough support for the neck. Now, you might end up making it lower. You might make a little bit of a roll at the end, but sometimes I like this too. I play with it. I like it and I don't like it. But it's nice to learn how helpful that could be. So I'm going to lean in and swing the legs upside down. Yeah, nothing under my head doesn't feel that good. <laughs> but you want to feel like what is, what's useful, right? So this little roll, right? Then you really notice that notch at your neck and getting that traction. The blanket is the most, um, it's the best prop, right? Because it's so flexible, right? You can mash it, you can stack them. Blankets are the most versatile. You can use them for, well, maybe not everything, but they can be in place of a lot of things if you have enough of them. <laughs> okay, so add a sandbag if you like on the bottoms of the feet, stretch the legs up. Remember, this blanket is not required. If you go, oh, well, this feels like I now have this spacer at my neck and it's very, artificial feeling, then no, use it, use it flat. But sometimes trying things out can be useful. If you're worried about it, it's too much, then, then don't do it, okay? So I like this because it has this reminder at my shoulder, kind of a little bit towards my shoulder. And then the chest is comfortably open. And I'm definitely not rounding my neck, right? This is, there's no rounding happening at all. So taking that study into, if you're doing this blanket roll, into how the spine has some areas at the top that may be used to rounding in the daytime, and now they're kind of, it's a confusion, right? They're just trying to just distribute and create that natural length. So just use the body weight, the legs, the sand, to make that impression into your back. It's big, right? Because that weight is... Pushing down, the hips are a little bit up. It's the opposite of prolapse. Can't lose it in this pose, right? So feel the belly and the resistance on the inhale. With the resistance, it pushes into the abdominal organs and makes the breathing muscles work a little harder. You could lightly move your head side to side, just feel a little bit of nudging. In the final few moments, make sure that you find a position that's comforting. Maybe the blanket needs to shift. I don't want you to overdo something that's unusual. Sometimes a little bit is enough, it's just a reminder. So feel that relaxed attention to the in and the out breath. Relaxing the hands, scanning through the body, and landing into the lower abdominal movement with the breath. So with minimal jarring action, see if you can feel the natural kind of curl of the tailbone with the breath. Even with props under you, you can still feel that natural movement. 
I try to just really let the body weight land. Bend the knees. Just bend them a little bit, a little bit more, and then shift the feet from the wall straight up to vertical. Okay, strengthening your stomach, right, with this work, strengthening it as an organ on its own. And then bending through the legs. Now when I lower down the, the position of my legs to bending, then I take the sand, and I like to, you can toss it overhead actually if you like, but I just put mine to the side. And then let the knees bend. Really feel that crease of the hip joint, the stretch of the lower flesh, mostly the back area, right? Not so much the legs here. But bending the knees really helps our back have that nice length in anything we do. So let the knees go side to side and feeling that cross fiber movement. And from cross fibers of back, we go to kind of cross fibers of the heart. So rolling to one side. It's kind of a hug into your legs when you roll. And then taking a moment, just a simple moment together. So even if we're virtual, we're connected in practice, get a feeling of the spine and that space behind the heart. Bring the hands up to place either together or layering over the heart center and uniting our breath in, feeling and with exhalation, grounding and bowing into our heart and gratitude.